Hey, how's everybody doing? It is Wednesday night at the time of we're recording this, Thursday afternoon by the time this drops, and you know what that means. It's time for the 57th episode of Pucks and Brews. I am your host, Michael Shades Farasino, alongside, as always, Liam, the Chellmaster Gottimer. Here's my cold brew sip. Ah, Liam, how are you? I gotta say, Shades, that was uh, as clean of an intro as you've had in uh, quite a while there. I love it. Very it's long time. Fast to the point. <laughs> It's been a long day, I'm sure, for the both of us, but uh, it's good to reconvene uh, here on this episode of Pucks and Brews. Yeah, and uh, it's good to reconvene after a week of Joe Douglas absolutely cooking for the New York Jets. Holy crap. I'm uh, excited thank, for this season. We can thank NYJ Matt as much as we can thank Joe Douglas. I mean, to send a DoorDash to one Jets drive while Mike Williams is there on his visit with the Jets. I mean, that is just, that's just brilliant. And that just goes to show you how committed the Jets fan base is to finally having a winning season in front of them. And I think with Mike Williams, wide receiver, they bring in and uh, you know, the offensive line help that they got. Oh, yeah. uh, I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah. Completely revamped offensive line. We actually have a good receiver coming in free agency for once, uh, man, just get Brock, get Brock Bowers in the draft. Hey, um, maybe. It'll be, it'll be a party in New York. Maybe it is, but you know, I mean, it's been a party already. He's going to be gone too. I mean, no offense to Zach, but I just think it's best for both parties to it's time to to move along. But I'm excited to have Tyrod Taylor. Guy's got a lot of drip, you know, crossing uh, locker rooms there from uh, the Giants to the Jets. So it's going to be a fun year for Gang Green. Oh hell yeah! And I most likely might be going to the home opener again. So for the love of God, please no Rogers injury. Do we know who they're playing? uh i don't remember okay well they'll be they'll be favored more times than not you know bearing any injury not sure. bad. i already went through one i don't need to go through another one yeah 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 me and me and you both me and you both yeah but that but... was an exciting end to that game though hell yeah uh, man hell yeah this year. probably the most exciting game of the season uh you know up there gotta be up there yeah that was 100 percent top three kansas city was arguably number one if not number two well Kansas City we lost yeah but that was a great game well we would have won if you know the yeah was. yeah yeah, yeah every, we all watched but <laughs> uh this, yeah this is in fact a hockey podcast and uh as I forget to say a lot of the episodes everybody please look in the comment section down below the description down below and please follow us on all of our social medias especially YouTube, hit that subscribe button, please. Helps us a lot. And with that being said, uh, let's dive into that hockey, even though I, as much as I would want to talk football right now, because, but we just did, and we're excited for the new season, even though we got to wait six months, but uh, it's time for some hockey talk. Absolutely. I'll just end the football talk by uh, by saying this real quick. We might be excited, but we're also Jets fans. So take uh, with that information what you will. Cautiously, now, cautiously optimistic <laughs> is the way I like to put it. Indeed, indeed. But we've got the playoffs coming up for the NHL. And, uh, yes, sir, they're getting, dude, excited. they're you approaching are. very quickly. And the hockey just lately, just across the entire league, has just been top Insane. notch. Oh, yeah. Except if you're the Detroit Red Wings, but, you know. Or the Islanders. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, all right, let's start or, the hockey or, talk. Or the for... Devils, if you want to go there. But oh, well. <laughs> All right, let's start the hockey talk for real now. Let's so unfortunately, it. this episode, we have to start off on a little bit of a sad note because we lost two former NHLers in based on the same day. I believe it was yesterday, both Chris Simon and uh, Konstantin Koltsov, who I think played two seasons with the Penguins, if I remember correctly. Yeah, he played uh, he played with Sid and Malkin uh, in their first couple of years. Uh, I think he was there three or four seasons. Um, you know, was young, um, and yeah, just sad situations for them both. Yeah, uh, Chris Simon situation. as well did not play for yeah P- Pittsburgh, and you know with Crosby and Malkin, but he did end up being a Stanley Cup champion with the Avalanche, and unfortunately, from what was reported, it sounded like both of them took their own lives, which you never want to see that ever, but you never know what anybody's going through. 
And, you know, uh, it opens up a bigger conversation, I think, uh, especially in terms of Chris Simon. You know, I know there's been a lot of CTE st uh, talk, uh, you know, what he may have, what repercussions he may have experienced following his career. Um, but either way, no matter the reason, uh, like you said, incredibly sad. Um, and uh, two players in the NHL family uh, that we've now lost and you never want to see that happen. So. Some, something just made a noise here that low key scared the crap out of me. But sad situation. May they rest in peace. Uh, hope they their families are able to get through this time. Sorry, the noise really threw me off there. Yeah, they, it threw me off too because I you saw my face as yeah, well no, as everybody I, watching. But anyway, but no sad time, and uh, you know, hopefully the uh, NHL community, like we have in the past week, will rally around one another. Uh, you know, which is good to see. So yeah, absolutely. So, on to a brighter note, but also a, uh, not exactly a good note, at least if you're the Detroit Red Wings, like we just mentioned, or the Islanders, for that matter, and possibly even the Philadelphia Flyers, because they've been losing a lot, too. Everybody in the Eastern Conference who is in contention for a playoff spot is trying to lose. And here come the Washington Capitals, where who are just like, oh, there's an open spot. Yeah, let's... Let's go ahead and take that. And the Capitals, as of last night, were the second wild card, which is insane to me because if you go back two weeks ago, the entire landscape of the Eastern Conference playoff push is was completely different. And this is going to get pretty spectacular coming down the stretch here. It's unbelievable. Nobody wants it. And uh, right now, as we're recording, Washington is a point behind Detroit for the second wild card, but Washington has two games in hand. Yeah. That's crazy. The Islanders have 73 points. They're three points behind Detroit, and they have one game in hand on the Red Wings. But again, they had opportunities to go and grab points. It's a tough opponent. I get it against the Carolina Hurricanes. But when you're at home and when you're pushing for a playoff spot, need to have a better game than that. Need to have a closer game than that. Need to push for at least a point. And uh, they just got outmatched by Carolina. You can say what you want about Elias Sorokin's play. I'm sure many Islander fans, uh, you know, already have been up in arms about that. Um, but this is right for the taking. And, you know, Shades, I'll fast forward a little bit and give a little bit of a prediction here. I think although they're playing as poorly as they are, this is the Red Wings spot to lose here. I don't think Washington is going to jump in, even though they have two games in hand. And the Islanders have not shown any inclination that they are going to make a push for this spot. Buffalo is lingering around as well, but they played one more game than Detroit and they're five points behind them. Um, so it's going to get interesting down the stretch, but right now it looks like nobody wants it outside of Tampa Bay and that wild card picture. So. Yeah. And the two main reasons behind Detroit's, you know, downfall or slide is one Dylan Larkin getting hurt and two Alex Lyon, who was playing fantastic earlier in the season has been pretty bad over the last eight games and i literally have the amount of goals against he's given up in each of those eight games in consecutive order three four four five four four three five you are not going to win many games if your goaltending is going through that bad of a stretch yeah, the goaltending has always been the question mark with Detroit, right? Thought they had uh, shored that up uh, with Billy Husso and Alex Lyon, like you said. Um, and I don't really think this was a season that Steve Eiserman expected to legitimately contend. Um, and now he finds himself in a playoff spot and, you know, he finds himself feeling the consequences of not going out and getting a number one starting goaltender. Because if you get into the playoffs now, you know, not only are you making a push for a cup instead of making a push for another draft pick to continue your rebuild, you're also not giving yourself the best chance by having instability in that. Um, so I completely agree with where you're coming from. But then again, on the flip side, we saw the Vegas Golden Knights go win the Stanley Cup last year with Aiden Hill. So yes. you could tell us that Alex Lyon or Billy Huso couldn't get red hot and Showtime Patrick Kane turns it on in the playoffs and Detroit has a magical run. So really, at the end of the day, you never truly know, but it's something to keep an eye on and a reason why they've struggled lately. That and Dylan Larkin being out. Yeah, absolutely. And as as much as I would like to count them out, I mean, we have seen teams slump into the playoffs and then out of nowhere, their goalie just gets hot and they go on a run. So you literally never know. Many times. Yep, for sure. Just never know. So with all that being said, if you had to pick a team right now, 
who's making out of Philly, out of the Islanders, Capitals, Red Wings, who's grabbing not only the third spot in the Metro, but the second wild card. Yeah, you know, the third spot in the Metro becomes a, a situation as well. Philadelphia is 78 points. Um, it's really tough. I think Philly holds on to that third spot in the Metro. I think right now they have five points up on the Islanders, and they played one more game than the Islanders have. But again, like I said before, there's been no sign whatsoever in the Islanders' play that they're going to go and take that third spot in the division. It's been there. It's been there the entire season. Everybody and your mother would tell you. uh, Oh, trust me. I'm in a group with two Islanders fans who I'm good friends with. They complain every single day that Lamorello should have sold at the deadline. But now they find themselves in the mix. I think Philadelphia is going to hang on to that spot, like I said. I think it's going to be Tampa Bay and Detroit. And I think Detroit's going to uh, end up with a meeting uh, against – either the uh, leader of the Atlantic or the leader of the Metro in the first round. Um, And it's going to be definitely a tough matchup for whoever uh, gets the wings. Yep. And I'm going to agree with both of your, you know, predictions on that one, because I don't know, as Philly was slipping, but I mean, they've, they're one of two teams that we were taught, just talked about in Philly and Detroit that are kind of defying expectations this season. And I, think they're they're going to continue to defy expectations throughout the rest of the regular season. Although I would like to see Washington get in just because if we do get the, if we do end up getting the one seed, I would love to play them because I think, you know, that would be one of the easier matchups. No offense to them, but I mean, look at, (laughs) look at Carolina, look at Florida, look at Toronto, look at Boston or Tampa. I don't want to play any of those teams first round, preferably. Peter Laviolette knows the Capitals quite well. Uh, too. So yeah, it's going to be very interesting down the stretch here. Um, you know, Tampa Bay scares me a lot as a wild card team. Yes. You know, I wouldn't take it out of the picture that perhaps Tampa Bay could catch Toronto. Uh, you know, you have two teams that have been going in different directions. I mean, right now Toronto has a game in hand on Tampa Bay and are five points up, but again, you never know. There's still how many games left in the regular season, 15 games for the Toronto Maple Leafs, 14 uh, for the Tampa Bay lightning. A lot can happen during that stretch of time. And also one more note on the Islanders before we uh, let this conversation go. Uh, the Islanders have 15, losses in the overtime or shootout that's 15 points in the standings that they've left off the board you win half of those games you're at 80 points and you're third in the metro right now so yep. again when you go to ot and you can't walk out with that extra point it should it should leave you with a sour sting in your mouth and that's why right there 15 overtime or shootout losses that's why they're not in the playoff spot and if they miss it you look at that stat and funny you should mention that because the loser point is the only reason Boston is in first place in the Atlantic currently. They also have 15 overtime losses, and they're currently sitting at 97 points, which is three points above Florida, although Florida does have two games in hand. So that definitely might come down to the last game of the season, and it's going to be crazy. But And the other stat real quick, Shades, that I love to look at when evaluating potential playoff teams across all the years we've done podcasts, you know what it is, goal differential. And if you look at the top two teams with their goal differential in the wild card, Tampa Bay at plus 12, Detroit at plus four. Of note, the Islanders minus 23, Washington minus 27, Buffalo plus two. So if anybody's going to sneak up there, it's going to be the Sabres. But for me, Washington and the Islanders are a non-story. Yeah, I'm going to agree with you on that one. I will I, end it, end it on this, though. If Buffalo does make it, I will be happy for them. Me too. Just, you know, because they're not the Bills, but I digress. <laughs> <laughs> I digress. <laughs> All right, so moving on from that. So there was another rule brought to light over, you know, the last week and a half since we recorded. And that rule was if a team is in overtime – and they pull their goalie in overtime, and it is even strength. If a goal is scored against them on that empty net, the loser point goes away, and they do not get a point if they lose in the overtime period. I did not know this, and this was only brought to light during one of Minnesota Wild's games, and I cannot remember off the top of my head who they were playing, 
Nashville. They were playing Nashville. Thank you very much, Liam. And basically that sent Twitter into a frenzy. And well, now we know. I don't hate the rule, to be honest. I actually kind of like that. I kind of like the rule too. It's something you really don't see. Uh, you know, the NHL seems to be a very straightforward league when it comes to their rules. And this is a little bit different, right? You know, if you're trying, because again, right? Three on three OT is so much about possession. You have an extra player on the ice. Even if it's three on three, even if you're playing at even strength, there's a pretty good chance you're going to go and win the game. And if you have clear cut possession of the puck in the zone while up a man four on three, you should win that game 75 out of a hundred times. And if you don't, Absolutely, you should get docked uh, the loser point. Possession, positioning, and awareness. All three of those things. Yep, right that on. If you can master those three things in overtime, you are most likely going to win in overtime. That's why the Rangers are uh, only have four loser points. And that is tied for the uh, least amount of loser points in the Eastern Conference with the Florida Panthers. And if you would pull NHL fans right now, the top two teams in the East, who are they? the New York Rangers and the Florida Panthers. So just goes to show you, you know, sometimes the standings do create quite a story, but I couldn't agree with you more. Um, you know, I like the rule. It's an interesting rule and I like it a lot. Yeah. I mean, I still wish they would, you know, go to the three, two, one point system, but uh, I'm at, like I said, happy that rule exists and it's probably not going to happen because unless a T unless it comes down to literally the last Game, either game of the season or last two, three games when a team literally needs to win to get in, I don't think we're going to see that again. Yeah, or unless you're a team like Minnesota, right, that needs every single point that you can get. Um, and, uh, you know, that's why they did that there. Um, so that's not two phone calls during this podcast, by the way. You missed two important phone calls? No, no, not, not important at all. Just people don't realize that uh, – things going on it's fox and bruce time damn it it's fox and bruce time but i quickly i quickly hung up there but uh but yeah See, you know, liam is a team player i am and one more point on the rule uh kind of conversation i don't this wasn't in our notes but i don't know if you heard this um frank saravelli on a podcast uh with johnny ranger fan johnny i don't know his last oh name. lazarus yeah so they were on a podcast together and uh, Lazarus just asked him, you know, what was one rule change that that you would make? You know, because, of course, this time of year, it becomes a topic of conversation between uh, the coaches and the GMs and, you know, everybody that has a stakeholder and, and you know, and making those uh, choices. Um, and Frank said, why, when you're on a power play, can you not clear, like, icing on a power play? When you're – wait, cl does he mean – why is it why, why is it not in, why is it not in icing when the team on the penalty kill sends it all the way down in their zone oh you okay took the, you took the penalty you had a good point you took the penalty why should you be able to clear without consequences and especially why should the other team not be able to clear and why should they have icings called against them while they're up a man on the power play it's a very interesting conversation maybe not a necessary rule change but it's, it's interesting to think about. Why are you rewarding teams that are on the PK that take penalties by giving them full-length clears without consequences? To so. sort of counteract that, I mean, you are a man down, so I guess that kind of evens it out. I'm just trying to find a logical reason, I guess. Yeah, but just, uh, just, just an interesting... But that is, like, you took the penalty. Why should you be able to ice it down and not get a call? That is a fair point. That's a fair point. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, oh, we did have some other minor rule changes discussed, but uh, it it's stuff like coaches can review uh, a delay of game possible penalty, or you know, if a puck is touched with a high sticker, it was one one of two things. Uh, the being able to challenge in a delay of game was one of the rule changes talked about, also. Hmm. So. Yeah, I don't know if that was implemented yet, but it, all I know is that it was talked about. What the fuck did I just do? Okay, I'm good. Anyway, so that brings us to our beloved New York Rangers. And first and foremost, uh, we would have recorded last week because we 
this happened about a week and a half ago now, but our schedules just did not match up, unfortunately. So Matt Rempe did end up getting a four game suspension because he accidentally elbowed who uh, was it uh, Siegenthaler? It was. Yep. Yeah. Jonas Siegenthaler on the New Jersey Devils. And I'm not going to defend the hit because I've seen the replay 10 times. His elbow is literally all the way up here. Was it bad luck? Absolutely. Siegenthaler, you know, tried to stop to avoid the hit, gets an elbow. And like I said, not going to defend the hit. I think it was a warranted suspension. I thought it was going to be only one or two games. Four, I thought was a little much. But uh, even Rempe said he's got to, and, and Laviolette also said, uh, he's got to be more aware with the elbow because if a rookie who is, you know, getting suspended four games, eight games into his playing career or 10 or whatever it is. Forgot to look up that stat. Uh, you know, that means that they circled him on the radar to keep an eye out for him during games after the last one that he got a game misconduct. Game misconduct. Conduct. Game misconduct from. There we go, Mike. There we go. Yeah, there's been a lot of noise around Matt Rempe, uh, you know, since he entered the Rangers starting lineup. I think more good than bad. I don't think he's a dirty player. Um, I think that was an unfortunate situation. He's got to keep his elbow down. Uh, that's just a matter of the fact. Um, and I think it was a rightful suspension, um, but I don't think it was deliberate. So, yeah. No, definitely. It was definitely bad, though, because even watching the replay, I'm like, oh, that looks even worse in slow motion. Yeah. <laughs> never want to see that. No, no never, ever want to see that. But hey, it happened. He got suspended. And I mean, it's kind of over and done with. But uh, do you think that is a partial reason why Labulette has been hesitant to put him back in the lineup since he came back from suspension and my camera's out of focus. I think it's a partial reason. Um, and of course your camera's out of focus. Um, but I think once it's, every episode. Yep. You know, I haven't muted my microphone in a while. Good thing. Oh, you I'm, better not jinx it now. <laughs> good thing I'm cognizant of it now. Now, if it happens, it'll be even worse. Um, no, I, I think it has a little bit to do uh, with uh, Rempe, you know, why he's not in the starting lineup right now. Um, but I think last night against the Jets showed you um, why you need him uh, in the lineup on a daily basis. So simple as that. Yeah. And speaking of that, so I was, in fact, at the rangers first jets game last night and they came out flying the rangers i ended up going to the game with my brother so that was actually the first time we were at a game together as fans because he used to work there and i think i don't even know if i was at a game he was working back in the day but i i just don't remember but uh it was a fun night you know except the losing part but i had a fun night saw my boy peter yeah. that was working and uh yeah yeah it was enjoyable i wish they would have won but <laughs> Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, but like I said, they came out flying and they ended up playing actually pretty good throughout the entirety of the first period outside of the two or three brutal giveaways that they had. And as soon as the puck dropped for the second, it was all Winnipeg. And the only reason the Rangers even had a shot is because they scored a goal with about 114 ish left. And that was Lafreniere. It yeah. was Lafreniere. Yeah. yeah, so my streak comes to an end this season. I go to the game against the Islanders at MetLife Stadium. I go to the game in Philly where they win 10 in a row. I come back home, go to a home game, and they fucking lose. Okay. Did you have fun at least? Yeah, yeah. Good night. Good night. Well, as long as you enjoyed yourself. That's all that matters, right? Yeah. And I'm pretty – I don't remember if the last game I was at was the game against Calgary – either last year or the season before that that mm -hmm. might've been the last home game I was at. So I had a, I had a pretty good string of games there. Yeah. You always, uh, you did, you did ever since the popcorn bucket, the popcorn bucket streak comes, uh, comes to an end. Well, uh, actually no, because I did not buy popcorn last night. So that streak is still alive. You did not buy popcorn. That's why no. we lost, man. That that streak is still alive. I can't. I can't just do it every game. I got to be selective. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, yeah. yeah so some different stuff every game. I guess. Yeah. Got hey, whatever works. But 
Uh, speaking of last night's game in particular, uh, Alex Wenberg did in fact score his first goal as a Ranger. So that was honestly cool to be at that game. And Kreider had one of his worst games in a while because he was just brutal, especially that one where he literally got the puck in the offensive zone, was just completely flat-footed, did not even skate, turns it over, Winnipeg comes down, you know, on the breakaway, they get the goal. I forget whether that was Shifley or Ehlers. Shifley. That was, in fact, Shifley. Did my camera go out of focus again? Anyway, it, it fucking, you know, I paid good money for this. Yeah, well, I mean, it wasn't that expensive, but, I mean, it wasn't exactly, like, 20 bucks. There we go. Yeah. But yeah, Kreider ended up having a bad game. That was the second and third period was the worst they've looked in a while. Uh, overall, as a game, that was probably the worst game in at least a month, I would say, in terms of like overall. What do you think? Yeah, it was uh, it was pretty bad. I stopped watching, to be honest, after the second. Was I, bad. You know what? What My buddy Mike actually texted me the same thing last night. And I said, yeah, that was the right decision. It's just, uh, again, you know, you're a Ranger fan. You know you know that there are just some nights where you just don't think they have it, and I didn't think they had it last night. Defensively, offensively, uh, you know, don't want to blame Shesterkin, but they're, you know, not a lot of time late goaltending either. Um, yeah, uh, to, uh, I'm not going to say it was completely his fault on two of the goals he gave up, but two of those goals that Winnipeg scored were pretty bad. And simply put, you got to stop that puck, right? Yeah. Yeah, you do. That I mean, that is what it comes down to at the end of the day. Yeah, absolutely. Unless you completely leave your goaltender out to try at that point, good luck. <laughs> but speaking of, you know, seeing Alex Wenberg's first goal as a Ranger, him and Jack Roslovic have both played games since we last recorded their first couple games with the Rangers. Uh, what are your first impressions of both of them? Yeah, I think Wenberg's a really smart player. I think he's a good two-way center. Um, I think he is the exact replacement that you'd want for Hedl. He's not at all the same player Hedl is, um, but I think he fits and makes the Rangers a more well-rounded lineup with his presence. Um, and as far as Roslovic, I mean, he's speed on the wing. I mean, that's all you're really asking for. I mean, I don't think he's lit it up with Kreider uh, and Sabanajad, but, you know, I think those things take time. And again, like all it takes is one timely moment, one timely rush, uh, you know, in a big game in the playoffs to really make your mark on this team. It's not about points at the tail end of the regular season. You know, we're trying to win a Stanley Cup here. So uh, for right now, I like how they're uh, assimilating into the lineup good to see yeah no Wenberg has been honestly great on that third line and you're right he is a heel replacement but Wenberg fits the third line role under a Laviolette system a lot better than Heedle would Heedle is more of like a finesse type of second line winger on a Laviolette coach team right absolutely yeah and Roslovic has definitely provided you know, that speed down the wing on the first line, which is something they desperately needed because Laugh and Kako, they're not that guy. Right. Yeah. They're not yeah. that fast. And Roslovic has experience, right? Playing with Adam Fox and, uh, you know, he knows the team well and couldn't get his, get it done against his former team last night, the Jets. So. Yeah, unfortunately. But they have looked both pretty good so far and – we still got 11 games until the end of the regular season. So definitely going to be have a microscope, you know, watching those two play over the course of the remainder of the course of the season. But yeah. So one thing I wanted to bring up, which I'm kind of getting 2022 vibes from this team. And I don't mean that as a compliment. We've lost three out of the last four against teams currently in a playoff spot. And we got two games coming up against Boston and Florida, two more teams in a playoff spot. If they split them, I'm not going to be too worried because still got a couple games left in the regular season to figure things out. But if they end up losing both of these games, I am uh, going to start to get a little worried. And if they win, it's depending on how they win, it might erase my worries. But uh I would say it's a yellow flag at the moment that could go either way to a green flag or a red flag, depending on how they play. But uh, losing three out of four to three out of the last four, I should say, against teams in a playoff spot is 
something to keep an eye on. I couldn't agree with you more. I think, uh, again, you want these measuring stick games as you're going down the stretch into the playoffs, right? And uh, the Rangers are definitely going to get that going up against Florida and going up against Boston. And for me, I won't think that the world is ending if the Rangers lose both of those games. But, you know, combined with what we saw last night uh, and combined with what we could see against Florida and Boston, if things do go sour, I think there definitely uh, is a cause for concern, I'd say. Yeah, I mean, I... Well, I mean, Boston doesn't really scare me after what happened in the playoffs last year, but Florida definitely scares me. Uh, but, like, it, I mean, we had this discussion earlier in the season. Like, a regular season game, like, it, it's a regular season game. You can't put, like, all the weight in the world on it. But towards, like, at this stage of the regular season, mo like, most teams in a playoff spot are going to be playing in playoff mode. They're going to be playing playoff style and it really is a good measuring stick going into the playoffs and we rangers definitely still have some kinks to work out absolutely yep no they do 100 percent. but again like you look at both of those teams like you said boston doesn't really scare me much and florida you know do they scare me sure are they super talented absolutely but at the same time did they overcorrect at the trade deadline and some would argue that their play before the trade deadline has been way better than it has been after the deadline. Sometimes you can overcorrect when it comes down to super talented teams. I think that's what the Rangers did last year, adding Tarasenko and Kane. Maybe that's what uh, Florida did, you know, bringing in Tarasenko themselves. I think it's when you bring in guys who are marginal, guys who help out in certain areas, like a Wenberg and like a Roslovic, when you don't give up too much of your roster, it takes the pressure off of the team to not have to live up to expectations, and it can yield better results from time to time. So that's why I'm more confident in the Rangers or even the Bruins than I am in a team like the Panthers. Hey, we'll Mark, see. Hey. It's, it's bold. I know, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll see indeed. And I don't – here's the thing. They definitely needed – correcting at the deadline last year the rangers i think yeah but i would agree with you the, the in retrospect in hindsight the patty kane move was an over over correction right and it made us and again when you add two top six players to your lineup that makes you drastically change what your game plan is. Maybe Gerard Gallant did want to play a defensive style where he really didn't give up much. But guess what? He couldn't because he got two players in Patrick Kane and Vladimir Tarasenko that thrive when the play is wide open. So hey, now maybe, maybe things could tight. have been different. And yeah, right now the Rangers are a tight knit team under Peter Laviolette, and everybody knows the type of way that they have to play, which doesn't make me too concerned come the playoffs. So. Well, outside of the second and third period last night, but yeah, it happens. It happens. Uh, yeah, I was uh, <laughs> I was not happy, <laughs> but yeah, other than that, it was just man. Still, we still got eleven games to go, and after Boston and Florida, I'm actually gonna look ahead right now to see who we do play because I know Boston is tomorrow because it's Wednesday now, so it's going to be tonight, you know, when this episode drops. But Boston is on Thursday, Florida's on Saturday, then we got Philly next week on Tuesday, Colorado on Thursday, and then, oh, thank God we play Arizona at the end of the month, because they might need that game for a confidence boost. You said Philly, one of those games? Yeah, next Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be an interesting game. Uh, Yeah, next Tuesday. That's going to be an interesting game. That's a measuring stick game for them. And again, Philly hasn't played us poorly this year. So, no, they actually, that was a honestly a pretty good game in Philly when they won 10 in a row. So, right. it's not like the 9 1 Phillies, the uh, 9 1. Wow. 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 Edit that one out. So, no, not, not like the game where the Rangers, uh, where the Rangers won 9 1 against the Flyers, the Philadelphia Flyers. Hey, Chuck Knobloch, baby. <laughs> not Chuck Knob. Oh my God. Oh. All right. Chris, well, I'm not editing Chris. either one of them out. No, no, no. Edit, the, edit them both out. Edit them both. No, out. That, no. I'm just going to keep them in. You save us both a little bit of embarrassment. Now nah, we're human. Hey, yeah. at least we realized it ourselves, and we didn't. Because I have, I have Chuck, posted mistakes Chuck? in the past. Chuck Knob. Yeah, but, that's a fucking. At former least I animal. said Phillies. That's a Philadelphia team. <laughs> yeah. Fucking. Chuck Knobloch, Jesus Christ, Chris Knobloch. 
Who is Chuck Knobloch? Is that like a friend of yours? Or I'm pretty sure that's a former MLB. -er. <laughs> I I'm pretty sure. If I remember correctly, I'm gonna look up Chuck Knobloch and find. Like, yeah, actually, all... yeah, to actually do that right now because I'm pretty sure. That yeah, was, you want me to? Yeah. yeah, that was pretty bad. That that was pretty fucking bad. Because if it wasn't shades. If any, if any of you haven't noticed yet, this is the outro. This is part of the outro. <laughs> Chuck Knobloch was a baseball player. He had nearly 2,000 hits and batted 289 in his career and had a 44.6 war. I, You know what? You you are absolved from this one. You you mentioned a near Hall of Famer. Hey, like that's I said. When you, that's when you say I'm absolved too, right? Oh, yeah. 100%. Okay. 100%. Awesome. Hey, at least... We actually both caught them this time and not like the past where I've literally missed it during, you know, the actual recording of the episode. And I had to literally put in fucking uh, literally fucking asterisk with the word over the video with the freaking graphic because like, yeah, it, it was bad. You move on. You're yeah, like, we move on. But after that debacle for lack of a better word this has been episode 57 of pucks and brews i have been your host michael shade sparacino alongside liam the chill master Godimer. follow us on all of our socials down below uh please subscribe to the youtube channel hit like comment if you want uh and you could honestly make fun of us i i it's mean okay. make, make fun yeah. of us it happens. It's okay. yeah I, especially me i deserve it after the fr freaking chuck nabla <laughs> <laughs> I deserve and, and to think you had the cleanest intro ever at the start of the show. You knew it was gonna go downhill at some point. <laughs> uh anyway, enjoy everybody. See ya.